I clicked. Are you still there? Okay. Are you here? Okay. We're all here. I think we're all here. I'm here. We're live. Hey, Yay. welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Here we are. So, yay, yay. Yeah. Um, it is January, is it the 29th? 29th. Yep. Uh, Sunday, January 29th, 2023. I have the correct year, I think. It's been so hard to remember. <laughs> um, I am Marta Ferguson. This is Hope Martin. Um, Hope put together a lovely agenda for us that I've just realized I don't have pulled up to refer to. So give me a second. <laughs> I will pull that back up. I thought that was great. Um, and I think, yeah, we'll all be better off, uh, if there's a plan, otherwise I just start talking. Right, right. Try and keep it as much as possible. We're going to ramble. I think we are both rambly people, but, uh, to keep us somewhat at least on or near a path. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to flip another light on. It looks a little dark from my end yet. Okay. So... Yeah, I am actually in my my husband's home studio, who has a much nicer setup than I do. Ooh. So the the lighting is much better. You probably noticed, although it reflects nicely off my my dirty glasses. Maybe I'll take those off and clean them. Um, and he has a nice blue wall back here. I do like that wall. And I see that it's hung with some of your art. Yes, <laughs> it does have some of my art on it. Yeah, yeah. I should have, if I had thought, I would have hung. Some of the Casper stuff behind me, but maybe next time I'll redecorate. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, yeah, I'm just um, happy to be able to get into my office at this point. It has uh, housed various things over the last year as our, as we are engaged in various projects and mm -hmm. shuffled in and through my office, some of which belong here, some of which do not, you know. You the, the great um, collage behind you. Oh, yes. I love this. This was, yep, yep. Much creative energy. Much creative in energy and memories. Birthday, awesome. um, by a number of small, and now not any more small children. No, mm -hmm. they're not. Small, they're not. <laughs> they grew. They're like in their 20s and, and upper teens now. And I'm yeah. just not sure I'm okay with that, but I don't have much of a choice, so I'll pretend that everything's fine. It's all good. It's all oh, good. good. All yeah. right. So, um, what we have been doing, um, do you want me to give the background on kind of how we got started doing this? Do you want to talk sure. about recent, uh, more, more specific, uh, recent efforts? So, um, Hope and I have known each other a long time. I'm a writer. Hope is a visual artist. Uh, we participated when we uh, both lived in the same city in Missouri. Um, we participated in an exchange for several years mm -hmm. where uh, writers and visual artists would both uh, submit pieces for consideration for a show at uh, the local art league. Um, and then both the pieces of writing and the works of art would get put together and you'd, you'd be paired with a partner. Uh, as a writer, I would receive a work of art. As a visual artist, Hope would receive a piece of writing. Um, and you would each then create in your respective medium based on what you got. Um, so at the end, each pair would have two works of art, two pieces of writing. And then this was all hung as a gallery show and produced as an anthology. So it was mm -hmm. tremendous fun all around. Um, Hope and I had both been part of that project and actually got paired as partners <laughs> without our knowledge one year, which was super fun. Um, Every time I have quinoa now, I think of you. Oh, tremendous fun. Um, so now we are low these many years down the road um, I am writing Paranormal Cozy Mysteries, uh, Demeter West and the Ghost Town Glitch, Demeter West and Absent Presence. I have a prequel forthcoming in a very few weeks um, that will be 
uh, A Treachery of Thomas's, Evil Steve and Scary Gary's First Adventure. Um, so yeah, it's it's all excitement. Um, but Casper, it's and it's set in Casper, Missouri, which doesn't really exist. It's fictional. Not um, it's not fictional, folks. Totally fictional. Um, it's a college town and cosmic crossroads. So I, Casper is a place where anything can and does happen. You know, uh, parallel worlds kind of bleed in and over one another and things mix and shift. And um, there's all kinds of mysteries to explore. There's all kinds of interesting flora and fauna that you can see but not actually touch as these parallel worlds are immaterial as they pass through Casper as Casper passes through them. Um, and so we get the Casper uh, ghostly plant guide and ghostly wildlife guide. Um, and I'm going to let Hope tell you what we've done to kind of create those. The last yeah. two or three Well, I can also show, I have a, a tab that I can, if we can, get that to share how do i do that i do i, I share my screen right and yep. then I go there's through. a little person with a yep. thing and there's people's there we go Ooh. okay are you seeing a lovely screen here with the casper oro pendula mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so that was i believe that was the first exchange we did i think was that that might have been our first exchange I remember doing that exchange. I don't remember when. I think it was one of the it was one of the early ones, at least. Okay. So you you had this this wonderful writing about them, and and it got me looking up, you know, all about the oral pendulas that we really have. There are several different kinds, and, mm -hmm. and after several tries at it, several drawings, this is kind of what I came up with, and based the look off of deep sea life. Mm -hmm. So the the kind of the the see through glowing edges kind of thing because that particular universe that intersected uh the casper universe that's close to ours it's still not exactly ours but the casper universe where the books are set um right it does not have those characteristics but intersects with a place that does have those characteristics so yep so that was that first one and then I think you responded to this one that I did, which I was calling Moody Woods. And I think in your piece, it was the bridal path. Right. It's the Holland bridal path. as in horses, not bridal as in veil. Right. right. <laughs> it's a horse path behind the stables. Yep. Horse yep, path yep. behind the stables with the, the little trickster cat-like shape that some people thought was helpful and other people said, no, 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 don't trust yeah. it. <laughs> don't trust it. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. a bit mischievous as all good cat shapes must be. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a, a pastel study I did. And I think after that, this was one you responded to, right. which was the frilly swim snake, which I just loved. <laughs> um, this was a piece I did based roughly on the Amor Tolls novel, A Gentleman in Moscow. Right. So the whole idea of, of being, you know, trapped. But I love it as a possible sea snake mm -hmm. um, metamorphic or larval stage, not mm -hmm. larval, pupil stage, I guess, because then those bubbles have a very good reason to be there. Uh, let's see. I think the last one we wrapped up with was the sentient kelp, mm -hmm. which this was the my response piece to is getting that kind of sketchbook style on black paper, which mm -hmm. makes this look so much easier. And we have that kelp kind of entangling mm -hmm. this other sea creature and going, OK, you need to go talk to Octavia. Right. The uh, Octavia, the crossing guard. No. Right. So the title. Um, yeah. She's she's somebody who, um, let's say, interrupts traffic as it comes near her dwelling um, and has helpers who also helped her inter help her intercept traffic. And her motivations, we're not sure about her motivations. Um, is she keeping the peace? Is she a pirate queen of sorts? Um, she appears to be a sentient octopus. There's yeah, a little tentacle that made its way into the painting. Oh, um, there, yeah. So, yeah, one of the many regular 
uh, manifestations from a parallel universe that appears in Casper. So. Yeah, so that was, I think that was all. Yep, that was okay. the four pieces of art that I have from last time. Okay, from our, our 2022 previous. efforts. Yeah, our previous exchanges. So mm -hmm. now we are in 2023. We are contemplating doing this again. And we're contemplating a somewhat different approach rather than working directly from one another's pieces. We're talking about each working independently from the same kind of concept. Like we would um, work together to design a parallel universe that might um, be rolling through Casper, that Casper might be rolling through, um, and each take an approach, doing some writing about, uh, doing some, well, tell me again, I, I'm remembering the word journaling. Is it ske a sketch journal? A kind of nature journal, sketch journal, where it's, you know, in theory done by someone who is ex has experienced these things mm -hmm. and is notating, noting them down. Um, mm -hmm. And I can show you what I've done that's kind of along those lines. Let me yeah. share that again. So I'm going to go back to share screen. Okay, now that is a spread that I've done for, I'm doing an inside out kind of journal where I, I create the pages first and then bind them up later. Mm -hmm. So it's very multimedia and only a little bit organized. You know, so there's, there's lots of room for creative wandering. Mm -hmm. like very sketchy. Mm -hmm. uh, things are done just enough, but not super polished. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Like that one page right there, I've got overlay and that mm -hmm. reveals a little more. Mm -hmm. So something along those lines. Very cool. Very cool. So we were talking about what sort of universes, what sort of settings um, might interest both of us. Um, and it, it sounds like um, Hope and I both have an interest in steampunk literature and culture. Um, so we're talking, I think, about a steampunk garden. Um, and garden can be interpreted, I think, any of a number of ways. Um, you know, the, the Victorians of our very own universe interpreted gardens in many, many ways. And, and steampunk writers do all kinds of things with gardens. Um, in in many different manifestations and how the mm -hmm. the machinery and the biological components all fit together um what that might look like what it might do uh why is it there um i think there are those are all great questions that could be really fun to explore um yeah and um and i as a as a writer i love characters i'm very character driven but i'm also I, I love a great setting and I love the interplay between character and setting. So I sort of love the idea that if we're designing a setting, what sort of characters does it give rise to, you know, mm -hmm. who's there. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what we'll develop as we pursue this. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. How are we, I mean, give me an idea of how we might start. I mean, we have a very broad mm -hmm. category now. So yeah. Victorian steampunk otherworldly Victorian steampunk. So things are even more open, which as you probably know, sometimes makes it harder yeah. when you have too much to choose from. You, you get that, that overwhelm of, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, date. What is it where you just kind of freeze under the, the load of possibility right. analysis paralysis. That's what I'm thinking of. There you go. Yeah. So any thoughts on how we might navigate that? Well, who is, if this is a garden, um, a garden isn't a patch of wild land. A garden is a bit of cultivated land. Mm -hmm. so it belongs to someone. Who might it belong to? And is it small enough that it is a garden maintained by one person? Or is it large enough that it's a garden maintained by a team of professional gardeners for say an estate um 
or is it some hmm. little cottage? Hmm. Okay. We have those kinds of considerations. I think, you know, as we make the decision tree of what's this going to be, what's this going to look like? And of course that leads us toward what sort of characters are we talking about? Um, the sort of characters we're talking about that might maintain an eccentric garden blending biological and mechanical elements in a cottage is very different than the kind of thing um, that we might find if such a place were to be maintained as part of the gardens of a great estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think initially I like the idea of, you know, on the smaller side and there's one caretaker entity kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I've been playing with lately, you know, small, big, it's really all kind of relative because to a cricket, its world is large, but to us, those acorns and little and mushrooms are very tiny. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it's one entity and a, a small patch, is it really then that also a bobble on a much larger tree ma maintained by an estate? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I kind of like that too. We're getting the microcosm within a macrocosm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's kind of where my brain just kind of goes, huh, you know. Very interesting. That could be fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we think, we, so are we set, you think, on on the, the gardening? I, I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, um, I will say not coincidentally, this is probably occurring to me because uh, we start playing a board game over Christmas called Cottage Garden. And I'm just so solidly. Cottage Garden, um, I've not heard of that. I'm just just um, thoroughly enjoying playing Cottage Garden right now. So, you know. Uh, Look that up. Woohoo. Uh, Yui Rosenberg is the designer. So yay, Yui Rosenberg. Hard <laughs> based or is board it game. based? The board game. Okay. Yeah. Board, board game, game inspiring uh, an ekphrastic exchange between two friends. To, you know, um, there's no there's no steampunk elements oh. in Cottage Garden, but it it has kind of thrown me back into that whole um the lushness of a, a beautifully maintained garden of flowers specifically not you know, there there are all kinds of gardens but i've been uh, probably because we've been playing so much cottage garden very focused on um flower gardens in particular um my dad was a big big rose gardener uh and then branched out and got from roses into wildflowers because they were so much prettier. Um, so, yeah, so I grew up um, around gardens. I grew up as sort of unskilled garden help. Bring the bucket, bring the spade, dig there. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> See, that's dead. Take that off. Not like that. <laughs> yes, yes. Minion, minion work. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm a garden minion myself. Um, so yeah, so I kind of love the idea of creating uh, a little, our little slice into this particular universe um, being through the uh, portal, through the um, visitation of this garden. And we would see just this littlest part of the garden that might be considerably larger. Um, Yes. Yeah. Uh, for our first first take is it's it's just this simple little thing, but upon further reflection, perhaps. How do you feel about uh, an automaton as our garden attendant, as our kind of primary mm -hmm. inhabitant and character? I am open to all possibilities. That would be some kind of uh, some hands and finger joints, you know, taking care of a plant. It would give you um, some sort of, of dexterity appendages, dexterous appendages, something. Yeah, I think that could be really fun. There's and there's I'll have to send you the link. Um, there's this uh, podcast I listen to, um, Escape Pod, mm -hmm. and one of their not super recent because I'm very behind on, on listening. Yeah. 
-hmm. where they kind of had the, this, it's a gardening context, but there is also a lot of tech involved in that you program the seeds. Ooh. Grow. Yeah, let me know which episode. Yeah, I will. I will send it. There's it's Great. it's a two part. I just listened to part one, and and the um, main character was you know getting her seeds and just there they just mentioned programming. So it's very much like, uh, you know, reality in that there's talking about horses and a downs and the derby is coming up. Mm -hmm. She's very focused on on gardening and getting root vegetables because I think because it will upset her father greatly that she chose those particularly. So, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Who the writer is? Um, I don't off the top of my head. It's a pod garden. I love that we've both had garden things. Just kind of. So it's the Contrary Gardener by Christopher Rowe. Okay. And it's part one of his eight seventy and eight seventy one on a skate pod. Okay, making a note. Yeah. So Kaylin, yeah, is the oh. main character. Ooh. 870, 871, you said? I Yes, exactly. They were around January, beginning of January time, January 5th. And the other one came out on January 12th. So that's how far behind mm -hmm. I am. Terrific. Although I don't know that I listened to all of last year's yet either. I tend to listen in spurts. I'll be really into it while, and then it'll fall. Devout for years and years and years. And and then fell off the podcasting, listening to podcasts kind of generally and, and yeah. haven't gotten back. But yeah, I still, I know Mer Lafferty has done so much yeah. with Castle and Escape Pod. And I just saw somebody else uh, whose book looked really good. And uh, she listed herself as having been involved with Escape Pod. And I thought, oh, good, it's still there. Yay. It is. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. The great thing about that, though, is you have a lot to catch up on. Right, right. Chris has gone on to do other things and, and yay. Um, that, you know, we all have new horizons ahead of us. Um, but yay that Escape Pod uh, has not floundered in her absence. So yay. Still there. Still mm -hmm. wonderful. I love it. Woohoo. Okay. All right then. So we are set. We have we have our heading. We're going to Oh. My, do one of my favorite. We're gonna cotty womple in that direction. Um, my favorite. I've, I've decided I'm a professional cotty wampler. Okay. I, I like set that. out with intention, but my destination is quite vague. <laughs> so I'm a okay. artist and professional cotty wampler now. I like it. <laughs> Wondering, does that apply? Because I generally know when I'm writing. I generally know where I'm going. I'm, I'm more the, I know where I'm going. I know I'll get there, but then I take a lot of scenic paths, a lot of loops. Yeah. I, I kind of classify that still along the cardio. Almost, you, not everything is planned out. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're going to, you're going to head in that direction, but the path. Right. Might not be straight through and probably, well, probably is not straight through in all likelihood. There right. are some, deviations, yep. discoveries to be made along the way. Exactly. And I found out moving from poetry to prose that um, when I overplanned, it wasn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. When I knew everything that was going to happen, I was just sitting down and, oh gosh, you know, I may be doing my taxes. Um, <laughs> I wasn't I'm not that exciting, which is that? It was not. It was not. Um, and being able to let go some, being able to just say, okay, well, I need to arrive approximately here at approximately this point. And, you know, here's some things that could happen between now and then and, and keeping it looser that way. Oh gosh, I've been a lot happier writer. Um, it the, the process is more enjoyable. And I've found, you know, when I do that with art where I just leave that op playful openness, the yeah. end result is better than what I thought. I was going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all those little kind of tangents just kind of add to the things that happen, you know, that, mm -hmm. that uh, cocoon thing, those, those bubbles were not planned. You know, what I thought I was going to do was more literal interpretation of the photograph, which is very much my thing. And just as I started playing with it, things either got taken out or added in and I was like, oh, well, that works. That's not what I thought I was going to do, but that works. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. So yeah, I had to look up the, I, I wanted to get the quote correctly at, attributed. I didn't want to just say, you know, Abraham Lincoln, because right. Abraham Lincoln said everything online. Um, right. No surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader. Robert Frost. Actually. Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. Yep. No surprise for the writer, no surprise for the reader. Mm -hmm. Write that down because that, yeah, I, th I think that applies to two dimensional art as well. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm not surprised or if I'm not excited, the chances are other people aren't as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And I think it speaks to a level of flexibility and attention, you know. Mm -hmm holding to basically where you think you're going, but not being so over-determined about it that you miss possibilities along the way. Yes, yes. You know, don't want to put have plans so tight that you've got blinders on and you can't see all these wonderful things hanging out in the periphery trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Hey, what if I tried X? Ooh, oh, that could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you look at it and go, yeah, that, nope, not going there. No. Hmm. <laughs> sometimes that happens too. Right. right. And that's okay. I think that's, that's all part of it and, and is, it should be expected and, and welcomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Possibility of revision, change, mm -hmm. different variations and versions. And okay, no, that's not ultimately where this is going to go, but Ooh, hey, I'm, I'm also not sorry I wrote that scene. That still gives me information I didn't have about what's going on elsewhere. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even if that's not something I end up sharing as part of the finished piece. It's still been a useful digression for my own process. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Very much so. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh. I, I love that you know I think one thing I've learned through our interactions is just how much the writing process and the art process are so similar mm -hmm. and I had not realized that writing to me is like I, uh, 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 words <laughs> not so good with the words here but I do try mm -hmm. so it's nice that they, I, to me that they're so similar you know, I think there's a lot of a lot of commonality. And I always love that about going to um, the interpretations gallery shows where you would get to see all of these different creative processes, all of these different points where people started and all of the places where they ended up and um, walking through that gallery and listening to because we uh, went in the original interpretations uh, show, uh, you might have been given your art partner from early on, but uh, you did not know one another's identities. That was right. part of the right. gallery opening was the great reveal of who you'd been paired with. Yes. Um, and so, we were, you know, it was it was this tremendous fun. It was kind of like blind date and family reunion. And, you know, I don't know what all, you know, um, grand prize reveal sort of all mixed up together uh, in one experience. Mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh. I know you. Oh, my gosh. I've been working with you. I didn't know I was working, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So. And then that, that one year where we were paired and, and I think you figured it out before I did. Yeah. <laughs> you were complaining about, I have to do something about Kmart. I don't know. And then I realized that then you, and then you told me, it's like, oh, that was me. I'm like, oh no. Because I had the pastel and I was like, Gosh, this looks like Hope's work. Because it was the snail. Was the yeah. garden snail that year? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I did the Fibonacci sequence piece. Yes, which I, you know, I love the Fibonacci spiral and, and sequence. Yeah. And I use that so much. So that mm -hmm. uh, that was mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. That, was, that was so, yeah, every time I, I have quinoa, I want to text you and just go, quinoa. <laughs> Feel free. I will send you back, probably. <laughs> Yep, and I, our kids just look at us and go, oh. you know, we're going to do that. Anyway. Figured out how to use StreamYard, 
and they're they're very patient about how proud we are about something that is so basic to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. But you know what? That's okay. It's all good. <laughs> it's keeping us. I would say it's keeping us out of trouble, but I'm not really certain about that. Other than maybe just directing that trouble. Way. <laughs> it's getting us to continue to learn. Yes. Continue to continue learn. learning and, and mm -hmm. trying and playing with mm -hmm. opportunities, possibilities. Yep. Very cool. So mm -hmm. what have you got coming up this year? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Returning to the agenda. Yeah. Because we have talked about, I do have it. Give me a second. We've gone over, you know, ourselves and our previous rounds, and what we're going to do in round three. At least what we're going to start round three with the idea that we're 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 cotty wampling in a way that we we know we're going to start here and we're going to end up with writing and art. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we really are not sure yet. There might be some fun detours along the way. All right. Well, uh, I turned 50 this year. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> You're young and you. I turned 55 this year. Woo! We've gotten this far. Yay! Um, and so, uh, you know, COVID, I, I complained a lot about COVID during the last live stream. I'm going to complain about COVID some more because COVID <laughs> continues to visit our household and other bronchial it continues to visit our household and mm. we continue to take more and more precautions. And it, yeah, oh, COVID is awful. Um, but it's, you know, it's been part of the lesson. Okay, so I've been redirected here. Okay, so what I thought was going to happen is not what has happened. Um, so the spring break novella I thought I would be pushing to have out two years ago for spring break 2021. Yeah, it's finally going to come out spring break 2023. So I'm very excited. I will have the, the I'll start the early this year. There will be this uh, Demeter West Mystic Match Mysteries novella. Um, and then for fall, um, I have my first romance novel that will be out. This is part of the Acastemia uh, series that I know that a small, you know, setting is a small liberal arts college in Iowa. Um, I'm stealing bits and pieces for many small liberal arts colleges here in Iowa. Um, and I'm stealing the name Ripple Brook College from the uh, generation generations old family farm that my grandparents had and and sold um, mm -hmm. when my mother was in her early 20s, I think, is when they finally sold the farm. Mm -hmm. um, Ripple Brook Farm that was near Nashua, Iowa. So Ripple Brook um, it, it is, it's been sold to somebody else now. They're, they're, they've done their own thing with it. Um, but the Ripple Brook name is no longer associated with the farm. Ah. So the Ripple Brook name gets to live on awesome. at Ripple Brook College. That's awesome. My mom got kind of all proclaimed. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. cool. <laughs> So that's what I have coming up. I've got um, I, both both books are written. Um, they need to be edited and polished up for production. So um, wow, those things need to happen, and then drafting for stuff for next year needs to happen. So we'll we'll see how much of all of that. You know, again, trying to hold loosely to where I think I'm going, but be prepared for detours. Mm -hmm. Happy and COVID. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the sorting system I'm using. I like that system. I, I, I believe I use that system as well. Mm -hmm. Like, here's what I think I'm going to do. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's all, it's all good. Yeah. So tell us about your upcoming projects. So let's see. I've been working on some different projects, you know, outside of pastels and, and traditional 2D artwork. I've been doing some cut paper and LED kind of, um, shadow box lighted shadow box if that makes sense sure let me share my screen and i will show you what that looks like um, 
present. I'll do all the clickety clickities. Okay, there we go. You should be seeing. Oh, it just there it is. Is it showing for you now? A little lighted box. Uh -huh. scene. So, um, and this started as a sketch in my sketchbook, and I started cutting pages in my sketchbook out, you know, based on what I'd sketched. I'm like, huh, I could do that like one of those shadow box things with LEDs. And I could enter that in this show coming up, <laughs> the next show coming up at Cal, which is tiny. So, mm -hmm piece has to be within eight by eight inches. Oh my gosh, yeah. Including the frame. So it's not very big and it's depicting that, you know, that small world, but it's also a big world if you are said cricket. Mm -hmm. So that one is done and, and is ready to go. I've already submitted it. Um, There's a documentary out there that's probably 25, maybe 30 years old now. Mm -hmm. um, it was French, Microcosmos. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen that. And then I think um, the Green Brothers have a, a, a YouTube channel. Okay. Call that Microcosmos. Anyway, then they're, they're, I think they're more, ba um, not bacterial level, more microscopic level. Ooh, okay. Now. But still, this is still something very mm -hmm. small, blown up, and, and creatively embellished. That little house in the front. Yes. Yes. Jay and I have been making little um, acorn cap houses. Oh, yay. And I saw on Pinterest, you take a little acorn cap and some clay, and you're turning these little houses with very little effort, mm -hmm. and they're just adorable. And I thought, huh, maybe I could make one in this and as if Cricket lives there. I yep. don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then the other one, what you see up there now, you talked about the walnut shell last time, but now we can see it. There's that walnut shell. And talk about micro. That is a crocheted bear. My first try. It's very not small. Crochet crochet bear. Bear. But it's very, very, I, I, I need to get a smaller hook, I've found. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of scary because the hook for that one is quite tiny. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. playing with that as, you know, and all the elements in this one need to be touchable. Mm-hmm. So something that literally, I want you to be literally be able to touch it. So the, the walnut from the yard and a bear that was crocheted, or maybe it'll be needle felting. I'm not really sure yet. And then little found items. The other day, you know, on a walk, I found a, a tiny little snail shell that would fit in bear's arms there. And it's just perfectly formed. There's no breaks in it. You know, so I may include that. I may not. I don't know. Okay. Those are kind of the two... Right now, and then you saw the, the page from the sketchbook that I'm going to be doing as the year goes along and assembling later mm -hmm. um, as kind of an inside out sort of sketchbook. Let's see, I think I stopped sharing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are the projects. Yay! I, I haven't stopped doing pastels. I will be doing pastels because next month I'm going to do a bunch of studies in hopes of returning to Herman. On, for their monthly art walks mm -hmm. starting in April. I'm probably going to do all of them, but I'm going to do at least half of them. So the first Fridays, I will be there in Herman. Yay! Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. Kind of fun. Kind of fun. Well, good deal. Um, hope, as always, this has been delightful. Um, as seems to be the case more and more things are happening in my house possibly as early as 3 15 so <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that I, I was like no nope, i know hope and i will wrap up within an hour <laughs> i can do this we got you could, we got this we can do this we can do this and dinner too <laughs> All the things and blowing six inches of snow out of the driveway early this morning. That was Ooh, we must have about a quarter inch of ice, probably less than that, but still, it's just Ooh. ice. I will take snow over ice. The, uh, I, I would prefer snow. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's it's powdery, so the snow blower actually goes right through it versus nice. the heavier stuff we had a couple weeks back, which took considerably more effort. Yeah, the yeah. shoveling <laughs> snow is not something I can do anymore. Unless unless it's dire, like life or death, because mm -hmm. I will be dead afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And but like, anyway, yes, this has been fantastic. I am so excited. So yeah, stay tuned for when we will have the um, conclusion of round three. Safe to say, a few weeks. And at we least. If not the conclusion, we will have mm -hmm. a continuation where we, a touch base, where we are. Yep. Yep. All right. Sounds great. All right, then. I will talk to you soon. We'll see everyone else later. Absolutely. Thank you all for watching, for joining yeah. us. Thank you. Any questions, we'll be watching. <laughs>